hard music in this one and not that dumb shit. Right. Uh, that <laughs> yeah. 5e. Yeah, does. 5e, 5e stuff was just dumb. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that it's an interesting looking class. I a lot of it looks really familiar, even though I've never really read old school essentials. But I mean, yeah, it's all I've it's, I've played a lot of versions of D and D. Yeah, it's it's just old, uh, you know, late seventies, early eighties, um, yeah. basic, basic and expert edition D and D, and I would say that they threw in a good of fairly good helping of uh first edition AD&D in there. Yeah. Um it is um it is a good enough clone that you can use all of the um pretty much all of the first edition AD&D stuff as is. All oh, of nice. the all of the modules are are pretty much drop in fit. And that's good. I've been told that <clears throat> most of the stuff from second edition can also be used. I haven't really bothered. Um, well, you're writing your own shit, right? I'm writing my own shit, so it doesn't, yeah. Um, it doesn't <laughs> matter all that much to me, but um, yeah, I haven't, I haven't tried to, uh, mostly because <clears throat> you know, now that I look back on see, it's funny because second edition was the edition where my groups kind of split off because we felt that D&D got a little gonzo, it got a little weird with second uh, edition. And uh, we started playing, actually, uh, Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay, first edition at that time. But, um, yeah, second edition D&D, it's funny because I look back on it now and I'm like, yeah, no, we were right. It Second edition is a little fucking weird. It's... um. It has like the, it has the basics of some really good ideas, but then, right. but then in implementation, you look at it and you're like, why, why did you have to make that so complicated? Why, why did you do that? It, yeah. it just worked better with first edition. I don't know why you bothered with this, but you know, it'll be cool. I don't. I, I won't start out going through a bunch of books trying to find. But there's plenty of shit right there in the in the adventures right. tome. E- exactly, yeah. the players tome has, you know, <clears throat> every all the stuff that you need. And essentially, um, the players tome and the referees tome are the two books that I mean, that's that's everything that you need to play the game. That's it. Yeah. The other stuff like. Like, the extra classes and races and stuff and all of that, that's just, you know, that's extra stuff. But um, I, I, of course, throw those in for my players because those are force options for you. If you, if somebody absolutely wants to play a kobold, they could. They could play a kobold necromancer, theoretically. Yeah, yeah. Theoretically. Have fun with that. But, I mean, you, you multi-class a lot in this shit. If I remember right. correctly. Yeah, you can uh, start off with up to three classes. So, um, and then yeah. your your XP that <laughs> so the XP that you get then has to be spread out amongst all of those classes evenly. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, you can you can multi class up to three classes. So, just keep in mind that you won't be leveling nearly as fast as other people. But you'll oh, have more I'm, options. I'm going to start out with just being a thief. Right. It's, it's kind of what, unless unless I if if I get two really high stats, I'm going bard. Yeah, because I can go dex and and charisma and be just fine. Yeah, if you meet all the pre, if you read all the prime requisites, that's the only other thing with multi class. You have to meet all the prime requisites, but um, yeah, if you meet them all. Oh, that's right. Bard has prerequisites of fucking. Uh, I have to have other levels and other shit before I can be a bard. No, right? No, you can no. start off at you can start off at level one. <coughs> Excuse All me. Right. Uh, let's see here. It says so for bard. Yeah, you have to have high charisma. Minimum dex yeah. of nine, minimum in- intelligence of nine, and a prime requisite of charisma. 
Yeah, if I get like two fifteens or better, I will probably do the bard. Yeah. You know, if if I can't, then well, I, I mean, that, get... it, it, some of that raises the question. <laughs> this question came up rather often when I was young, you know. Be like, well, I want to play a fighter. Ma I want to play a half elf fighter magic user. Okay, well, you didn't get the prime requisites to <clears throat> for that. So right. the fact of the matter is, though, is why do you want to be a fighter magic user? Why not just play an elf, the class, and then you're a fighter magic user? Because <laughs> elves are automatically fighters, and they automatically can cast spells. They are like the original. You know, uh, what's the 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 uh, fighter, the new fighter subclass um, they can cast? They're, they're one of those. They're just automatically right out of the box. Right. Hello, Cameron. Hello, Devin. Hello. Hi, my friend. So it looks like uh, Kevin has a migraine. Uh, he, just, he just messaged in to say that he won't make it. Corey is going to be out again, and I don't know how long Corey will be out. Um, Corey had a death in the family, so um, he's kind of uh, he's just needing he's just needing some space and some some time. So yeah, yeah, well, that's understandable. So yeah, that is where we are at with that. So I think it'll just be the three of us for tonight. <clears throat> well. Uh... We're definitely not going to get into any trouble with us. No, no. <laughs> and uh, just a reminder for Cameron, uh, no no game this Saturday. Just a reminder, we're taking this Saturday off, and then we'll be picking up um, with that next week with, um, theoretically, with character creation, but... <laughs> You guys can experiment and do whatever you want. You guys might show up that Saturday and I already have characters made. That's fine. Um, Thank you. I might have forgotten. So. <laughs> yeah, no, I I know. I, I uh, It was funny because I was doing some prep work today and I'm like, no, wait, what am I doing? I don't need to prep for Saturday. <laughs> that, that campaign is done. <clears throat> so, anyways, welcome to Pirates of Drynax. <clears throat> we will be picking up where we left off last week, these guys uh, rented a Aslan crawler and will be heading out into the Trioki uh, outback uh, in a, an attempt to make contact and talk with some of the native humans. There's only 8 billion of them. I imagine, you know, you could throw a rock and hit one on accident. But before we get started, we would like to thank one of the friends of the Greenwater Guild Hall. None of these are sponsorships or partnerships of any kind. They're just uh, products that we really like. And tonight we would like to thank Dogmite Games. Uh, Dogmite Games makes beautiful wooden accessories for your tabletop role-playing games, such as <clears throat> dice vaults, dice trays, dice towers. They have wooden DM screens. And this really cool thing called the Player Vault. I bet all of their stuff uh, can be customized. And... Uh, if you order something that's customized, it'll usually ship in six to eight weeks. Um, but they do have stuff that's in stock, so if it's a gift idea or if you just want to order something that's cool looking and try them out, you can go and check out their in-stock inventory. And uh, that stuff usually ships in one to two business days. And we have a discount code. It's good for 10% off, and it's good for everything on their website. <clears throat> just go to your their website, put whatever, whatever it is that you want to order into your cart and you can use the code uh, FRIEND in all capital letters and that will net you 10% off your purchase. They have really cool stuff guys, you should definitely check them out. <clears throat> um, if you are a fan of our Traveler games, we do have websites for all of our campaigns via Obsidian Portal. The link down to that to this campaign is down below and uh, <clears throat> the adventure log is written in the manner of uh, news service articles from Traveler News Service. Um, the, it, it deals with a little bit of everything from the entire region and may not, uh, those news articles may not be about this particular adventure or these particular players, but usually it has something to do with 
with what's going on in the background. <clears throat> and uh, these guys have been taking more and more of a front page uh, situation as they uh, become a little bit more notorious. And especially now, there definitely there is a big front page uh, news article that is coming up because these guys are um, <laughs> they're going to become heroes um, or or something of something uh, something hero adjacent. Um, so yes, uh, definitely check that out. And if you like what you see, uh, please go to the front page and give us a thumbs up. We like to see those fan likes, and we hope you enjoy. Um, we were, as, as we were starting out, uh, we were talking about our new uh, Saturday campaign that we'll be starting up. Um, if you are a fan of old school, um, the old school Renaissance style games, where we are going to be doing a uh, old school essentials advanced fantasy game starting on Saturdays on February 11th. And uh, <clears throat> we will be running my campaign setting, which you can... Uh, purchase now available on Drive Through RPG and on uh, Big Geek Emporium. It is called the Brawnhaven campaign setting. If you go to Drive Through RPG and just search for Brawnhaven, those should come up. It's got a complete. Well, I, I would say complete. It is a intro campaign setting that is being built upon uh, with each adventure and each source book. So um, definitely check that out, and uh, I hope you enjoy it. Are you going to have, like, a, a town crier or something uh, running on the Asidio portal with with I, the Braun Haven I think I'm, campaign? I think I will uh, be doing something similar um, with broadsheets or a town crier for uh, the town of Braun Haven. And, uh, yeah, yeah I, I've been giving that some thought. I'm not sure exactly how that's going to look yet, but, uh, yeah, that that will be something that will be happening as well. I like to make the news. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're good at that. Uh, yeah, there there will be something. It might it might even just take the form of rumors and uh, bard's tales uh, that go around the uh, the tap or the tap room at the uh, Braunhaus Coaching Inn in Braunhaven. So I don't know. Well, I, I I'm uh, I'm still in the process of formulating all of that. This is. <laughs> This is all uncharted territory for me, and it's a little bit uh, different. Uh, honestly, it's less daunting because I don't have to look anything up. I I'm the one who's creating it, so it's all in my it's in, in my brain. I just have to make it. Um, so where we left off, you guys had rented the this uh, terribly ugly looking uh, crawler. <laughs> it. it it, I don't know, man. It looks like a tick with tracks. But anyways, um, this is the crawler that you guys have uh, rented. <clears throat> and um, you're heading out into the outback of uh, Trioki. And um, so Trioki, uh, the atmosphere on this world is a little bit thin, unpleasant. You were told, you know... Um, you're probably not going to be here long enough to bother with the suffering of acclimating to it because it's going to take you, um, it would take you several weeks to acclimate and you're not going to be here that long. So just, just forego that. Just wear the, wear your respirators and, and be comfortable <clears throat> while you're here. I think, uh, Tang just decided to wear a vac suit, I think. Or yeah. something. You know, so yeah, I know you guys should be, you should be fine, and uh, um, all of the the um, the refugees that are piled into this crawler. Um, you probably have two crawlers. I would imagine that um, that Nando and or Nendo and um, Yana Teak from Traveler News Service probably rented a second um, a second crawler. Uh, the other thing too that I should bring up that I. I may have glossed over or forgot to bring up. So Traveler News Service, Yonatik and uh, Nando, they have a a uh, uh, Type S scout ship that has been following you as well. Um, it, it it's just a it's just a news service ship, uh, unarmed, uh, unfortunately, but basically it has all of their camera equipment and and um, 
they're you know that's where they can go if they need to but it's got it's it's got a, a crew of two that their whole job is just to follow you guys back and forth or to um <clears throat> should the need arise um to to get yana and nendo out in a hurry now <clears throat> part of that might be um for instance you are you're you're in the Harate, um, where there is no um there's no um there's no expos. So um you know if they needed if they needed to get news to to uh if they needed to get a report to the news service quickly they wouldn't be able to do it here. They'd have to jump out in a hurry, et cetera, et cetera. And so they have their own ship that's kind of for that that carries all their their equipment. <clears throat> but for the most part, they've been staying on the Bad Betty because that's where the news is, and they're getting as much footage as they possibly can. And so, likewise, they are following you in a second uh, crawler. And, I mean, I think, if I remember correctly, you guys had, like, 30, 28, 30 refugees that were that were up and about moving around with you. Um, yeah. Right. So I, I would imagine that <clears throat> most of them stayed with the Betty. Um, but, uh, you know, you've got <laughs> you've got uh, this crawler is crammed full and, and their crawler is crammed full. So there's, there's at least... Uh, between the two crawlers is at least 14 people in total um, cruising along in these things. And <clears throat> so, who's driving? Does anybody have... Um, it's got an autopilot, an it, enhanced it, autopilot. It does have an advanced autopilot, that is true. Um, I have wheeled... I mean, if you... It, it would use... Zero. Yeah, it would use uh, drive use tracked... tracked. But um, I but I mean, drive zero. if you've got drive at all, that means you've got drive zero. Yeah. You want to try and? I could drive it. Hell yeah, Keith, drive this bitch. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how this goes. <laughs> so, yeah, Keith, go ahead and make a uh, drive plus uh, dex check. Plus dex. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah. Um, so that's twelve. Okay, that's that's actually really really good. So it's it's got a sensor system too, doesn't it? It has uh, yes, yeah. it, has, it has an improved sensor system. Um, <clears throat> it's got control system. So actually, with the uh, enhanced control system, that actually brings uh, Keith's score up to a fourteen. Um, it's got a computer too. You know, improved communication. So, I mean, this isn't this isn't a bad vehicle. Um, you know, considering that it's um, out here in the in the outback, and uh, it's an Aslan TL10 vehicle. So, I mean, this is actually not half bad. And you guys are. Uh, so, the reason why why Keith had to to make a a check is because the the further that you get away, probably about. I would say about 15 to 20 kilometers from the starport. Uh, the the ground just the there are no more roads. <laughs> it's just you know crawling through the dirt and making the road on your own, following as as good of a path as you possibly can. Now the one thing that you notice about the the foliage on uh, Trioki is the colors are very bizarre. Um, the tree line. Uh, the trees range in color from uh, anything from like an obsidian black all the way to a purple or a deep blue. Um, and all of their leaves are this color. The bark is usually like a darker, like some of the blue trees, the bark itself might be bl like a deep blue, but the branches coming off with the, with the needles or, or leaves, they're more of like a purplish they have like a purple sheen to them. It's very a very peculiar um, layout. The grass itself um, tends to be like a. It's still green, but it tends to be more in the aqua hues. Um, so it's this this weird 
very, everything's very blue here. Um, and so as you as you are trucking along, <clears throat> you guys get out probably around. Um, mm, You guys get out about 20, 30 clicks, and um, the uh, you start to, on the on the horizon. You see that there is this um, small um, dale where you know there's a series of hills, and there's a small valley in between. There's like a small shed or, or a small watershed that comes through, and then um, you see that there is a small series of um, buildings there, uh, rustic, uh, it's, it's hard to classify it as a town per se, but it's at least a, um, small collective ranch. And as you're, as you are coming up, you see the, the countryside around you is dotted with, uh, with, with Awua. There are, there's cattle everywhere. These, this, uh, these Awua are all over the place. And, um, <clears throat> You, in the distance, you can see that there are there are obviously people that are tending to these awua, but as soon as they see your vehicles, they they either dodge, duck and dodge out of the way, or or try to hide. They don't they don't really want to be seen. And so as you pull up to this uh, the small <clears throat> communal ranch, it, it obviously it's. I, know, I guess we could call it a village, um, but it seems like there there's one massive ranch where probably a good ten fifteen uh, families are actually ranching on this, and then this is kind of their communal area. So I guess it's a small village. And as you pull up, um, you know, window shutters close, doors close, curtains get pulled, but you all get the feeling like you're being watched. And so <laughs> you pull up and you stop your vehicles and, uh, you know, this is what you see as you st as you look out the windows of the crawler. What, how would you guys like to handle this? I mean, you're here to, to meet people, and so the people are clearly xenophobic. Well, you know, we can start with a little scan and just, you know, I mean, we've got sensors, and, and I sure like to use them, so... If, if that's okay, I'll just do a big active scan, you know? Um, every, the three of you can make um, uh, recon plus intellect checks as well. Okay, well, then I'll just do my recon plus intellect, you said? Yes. I really got a neat. I got a seven. I got a fourteen. Ooh. <laughs> and and uh, Beth got an eight. You said. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So Ting and Beth, you looking around, um, looking around this this small this village, you see that um, for the most part, um, it is very rustic, like. They actually have a windmill. The windmill, though, it's not, it, it, you know, <laughs> you, you didn't go back to Holland in, in the 13th century. No, this is actually a modern-day windmill. Um, but um, it looks like a lot of the power for the town is generated from the windmill. You see that there's also, similar in construction to the windmill, you see that there's a water wheel. And... Some of the power for the town is is generated from that, um, but at the same time, you do see that there are some indications of higher tech stuff. Um, like there's a you know a uh, a fairly modern uh, generator, as an example. Um, you see that there is a communications antenna. Um, it doesn't look like it's probably got much range but there you know it probably picks up local radio broadcasts maybe some over the air tv broadcasts things of that that kind of nature um so for the most part the village 
probably tech level five with some some imported technology is what you're saying. Uh, you know, if they got all these antennas and shit, can uh, can we go ahead and do a little probe of any of that and at least try to figure out what fucking language they're speaking? Um. Well, I mean, yeah. You, you I mean, if there's signals all flying about and and all that, you know. Yeah, I, I mean, mean, you can you can you can tune in and and the local it, it, most of it is like local uh, underground ra pirate radio broadcasts. Um, they're speaking Galanglic, a, a mix of Galanglic and um, uh, Troke. Okay, and then they've got their own like unique dialect, probably. Of how it all fits together. Well, when like they do, we when were they ran do... up on a bunch of Australians, you know, they would speak differently than us, but yeah, they would still yeah. speak our language. Yeah, when they when they, when you're hearing these broadcasts and they're speaking Galanglic, <clears throat> the one thing that you that you notice right away is that it is um, a heavily accented Galanglic, and whenever they are speaking it, it um, not necessarily. Not necessarily broken, but um, you can tell that it's not their first language. Troke, however, are... they speak fluently. So our refugees understand? Oh, when... yeah. Yeah, all okay. of your refugees speak Troke. In do fact, we want to let the refugee leadership go talk and, and figure it out, or do we want to broker this, or what are we wanting to do? We should check with them and see how comfortable they feel with how, like, smelly and weird-looking this world is. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, so, Keith, with your, with your seven, you, you didn't really notice the, the tech um, around, but you do see that there is a um, there is a communal building. Um, it looks like uh, it, well, it looks like it looks like a uh, maybe a tavern or a restaurant of some kind that's kind of in the the middle of the town. Kind of for a town this size, it's probably everything above. It's uh, you know the the where they get together for you know large communal feedings tavern town hall all in one building and um <clears throat> you see that there are a couple of uh men that are um kind of they've they've clearly taken up a cover kind of position and they are but they're hiding but they they've clearly taken up positions of cover and they are armed with hunting rifles Oh yeah. Okay. So we we should uh, we should definitely approach them cautiously, and uh, uh, we don't want our um, refugees to get in harm's way, right? So maybe we should. So you're saying you we should just go talk to them? Yeah. Maybe we should ju just try to broker a deal with these guys. See if they'll, uh, you know chat with us at least i'll go with you give us the lay of the land kind of so right. when you when you, this was the other question i had when you uh left the starport if you remember correctly you you guys stashed some weapons in the uh in the shuttle um did you bring those weapons with you well yeah <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I I figured. Okay, I, I, I mean, figured if, that was if, probably going to yeah. be the answer. I mean, oh, we're going out into the outback. Well, all yeah. of our smoke so, I mean, weapons and stuff fit in great there. Right. So I mean, this is this is the the uh, this is the thing that that really kind of stands out with Keith is that one, um, these guys are clearly using. Um, they're almost when I say that they're taking up positions of cover and kind of uh, hiding but keeping an eye on the ship. They are clearly using military style tactics. They are armed with uh, with like revolvers and hunting rifles. Nothing 
excessive, but you do know that the planet, Trioc, Trioki, um, is, has a, a, a no weapons policy. So you're like, hmm, that's a little weird, but they, you're out in the outback. So I don't know, maybe the rules don't, as, don't apply as much to locals. But um, so how, how are you guys wanting to, to deal with this? How do you want to approach? I'm going to put on my piston glove. That's for sure. I thought we might just like yell out like, "Hey, dummies, we see your position." You want to? Is there a loudspeaker on the crawler? Uh, I would say there probably is. Yeah. I mean, I could I could give out a a nice message in Troc or whatever. Uh, that that shows that we have goodwill and and everything. Do the refugees have any idea what to do? Are these people all the same? Like, I know they all speak Troc, and I yeah, think there's a lot of escaped slaves, but I don't know if they're all the same culture because it's a different planet. So. Well, I mean, right now we're just a big ominous crawler machine that rolled up on them. Yeah, yeah. We, we need to tell them that we're friendly at first. At, at least give them a chance to be friendly. Yeah, and that we're, like, humans. Right. Because they probably are just afraid of Aslan. You, uh, you want me to step out and say hi? Sure, go for it. I think you'll be okay. All right. So yeah, I'll 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 step out of the crawler, uh, and hold my hands, you know, kind of up in a peaceful gesture with my palms out, and I will call out and and truck, you know, uh, I mean you no harm. Okay. I'm jug jug. Okay. So you kind of come out with your hands up, uh, pushing behind you and coming out of the of the crawler as well is Lenka and Ilum, the the two refugee leaders, and they just come out from behind you and just walk right around you, and they're like, "We don't mean you any." They're saying stuff in Troc. We don't mean you any harm. We're here. You know, we are refugees from uh, Hitiakia. We are here to, uh, this is our promised land. Well, I Do guess you I'll... like that? They're going to start out with that, okay? <laughs> <laughs> well, they really believe it, so yeah. yeah what would you do uh, if you think it's all going to work out if you just land here, then. Yeah. I mean, well, I, yeah, I guess, I guess you guys can take it from here. Uh, yeah. So, uh, the uh, I'll eavesdrop. The uh, yeah, you kind of eavesdrop, and uh, they just keep basic. Lenka just keeps repeating over over. She just keeps telling them that you know we don't mean you any harm. Well, the the guys with the rifles start to come out of their their positions and cautiously. Uh, make their way forward and as they come forward um, the doors and windows shutters start to open and people start to to meander out and uh, kind of come out into the town wanting to meet uh, Lanka and Ilum and of course the rest of you and so um, it, basically they, they you learn that um, so the, the the hunting rifles and and uh, revolvers they they they're not they're they are xenophobic but they're not hostile at all um these are these are just tools they 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 are um they have to protect their awua herds and there's plenty of predators out there and the only way you're going to do that is with a rifle or a pistol um but they um you know once they realize that uh you are you're not you know hostile forces um, they do all seem to be, um, aside from being xenophobic, they do seem to be worried about something. They scared about something as far as, um, you know, when they saw the crawlers, you know, these are clearly, <laughs> obviously these are Aslan crawlers. Um, they were, they were, they seem to be a little bit nervous about that. But after they realize that you guys aren't here to hurt them, they invite you into the uh the village tavern and um um you know all the families have questions they all want to meet the refugees all of this um 
So they're happy. They're okay with things so far, I guess. Yeah, yeah, they they um they're more I don't know that happy is really curious. Well, they are refugees, I mean. Oh, the, so far the refugees are extremely happy. The, the refugees are ecstatic. This is exactly what they were hoping for. This is, you know, everything that they they could have ever dreamed of. Um uh, but Beth um make a medic plus your choice either education or intellect check. Uh, ten. So, in talking with these people, uh, the locals of Trioki, um, you are, they are obviously humans, and I wouldn't say that they are dumb, but in just a very little bit of talking with them, you, you come to realize that there is some kind of limit on on their intellectual capacity like they can learn this much and then it's not that they can't learn more it's that they absolutely have no interest in learning more it's like there's, it, it, there's just a wall they're they're they are genetically bred to be kept simple okay well, and that's distinct from the um refugees in our thing correct so. Correct. They yeah, have to they, make a decision if they want their future generations to mix with that or not. Right. And so, I mean, you already know that um, the humans, the 8 billion humans on Trioki were genetically bred by the Glorious Empire to be a labor caste. And so far, all attempts at uh, integrating them with Aslan society or putting them into another caste type system has failed. The only thing that they are good at evidently is raising a woo a cattle and uh they have taken to that voraciously all right um when i get a moment with the with our refugees away from the other ones i'll i'll let them know they i mean they can all decide that that's fine if they want okay what about Ting and Keith? You guys, uh, how are you? You guys, are you guys mingling or just listening to stories? What? I mean, well, I mean this, this kind of, this kind of, you know, isn't so much my business. If they're all just going to talk and everything, and and all that, the the news people are here, right? So, I mean, it's not like I really, really want to be nefarious or anything, but. If they are going to set up camp this fo close to the starport, uh, God, this is a great little jumping spot. If we could get these humans to kind of be a good go-between between between the local Aslans that move in and want to claim this planet and work this planet versus all the other people, it would be a thriving workforce to supply goods to the Genix Empire. So and you bring that, you, you kind of... Uh, broach that subject and several of the humans there <clears throat> uh, the the locals are like absolutely not we don't want any aslan here um and uh they they start to tell you about um so so there is a um there is a blockade on Trioki right now. No Aslan are allowed to land on Trioki. Um, the, and the reason is because there are 8 billion humans here. And they, the Aslan want to come down and, and take land. And right now the land belongs to these humans. And so that, of course, is creating a problem. And so these... Uh, the... Humans tell you that um, there is there is an Aslan lord uh, named uh, Kia Kia Wo Kia Wo Kia who has um, broken through the blockade. Uh, him and his Airy have come down. Airy being his extended family, and they have set up a 
um, a camp with a uh, makeshift manor, and uh, they are they have camped right in the middle of uh, these Awua farmers' um, prime land where they where their Awua go for um, grazing and um, watering during the day, and the the Aslan Lord who has set up there. Um, you know, first of all, he's breaking law because he broke through the blockade. Second of all, he's now taken to um, shooting their Uwua because he doesn't want them on his land or he'll claim them as his own. And there has been some skirmishes between his group and the humans. And the humans have taken up to doing some vandalism, um, but it hasn't broken out into outright um, war. But there have been injuries on both sides. So, I guess if 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 we take care of this this Aslan Lord that moved in, right? All the refugees can move here, and we can just go. That'll be fine, mm. right? Is that is that what I'm hearing? I, I don't know that it would be quite that simple, um, but well, I the, mean, they, how complex can your plan be, they, Simpleton? They. <laughs> They tell you they're like, well, we can show you that we can show you the Aslan camp. We'll take you there. So, right. I I don't know uh, if I want to bring this up in front of everybody, but I I wanted to suggest this as an option. Maybe they because they have a lot of Awua, they might have some excess, and they might be able to trade with humans. And so maybe Drynax could set up some sort of trade directly with this planet. Oh, most certainly. That wouldn't that would be that would be easy. Cool. I mean, assuming that you you get this whole um this whole Aslan thing taken care of. But yeah, I mean, they have they have so oh. many um they have so many Awua that they have been uh selling directly to the Herate military. <laughs> that is in currently that currently has the um the blockade going on the planet. So I mean, there are plenty of Awua to go around. How nice. All right. Well, I mean, yeah. So if 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 that's the case, then you know, what about these refugees? Are we just dropping them off here, or is that? I mean. That's really my main concern is we well, keep and that, these I mean, people that, off the ship. So the so the that's the situation is that um, you know the the locals that live here don't have a problem with that, but they're they are telling you directly that this Aslan Lord probably isn't going to allow that. And uh, what, I mean, not not so much that he'll say no, you can't do that, in so much as that he'll just start killing people. Okay, well, you know, you know, maybe if the captain and, and, and gives permission, we can go. We can go negotiate peace with the other Aslan. That that sounds. We're good at that kind of stuff. So, like I said, he the 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 leader of their their camp or one of the men. Um, he he says, you know, here we, it's starting to get towards uh towards. Uh, mm, late afternoon and he says if you come with us we'll t we'll take you we can show you where this camp is and uh he says but yeah. we're not going to want to get too close because like they said like i said they they've shot at us and we don't want any injuries but we can show you where this camp is yeah we'd like to look at the camp so i would like to look at the camp i like to go camping i assume you're going to go armed oh. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, you're out in the outback yes, with Aslan dickheads running around. I assume that you guys are probably going to be intelligent and and be armed. So you <laughs> you um you follow these guys out into the brush, and uh, you kind of go through some uh, through the these wooded glens, and they lead you up to the top of a hill, and they get you. They tell you to get down, and you kind of belly crawl up to the top. And the the leader of, of these um, of these humans has a uh, has actually some some fairly nice digital binoculars, and 
hands them over to uh, Beth, and he points down. And you could look through these binoculars, and you can see that the Aslan have set up a, uh, a, a camp uh, that's comprised of multiple tents, advanced shelters. There are a number of, uh, of um, small craft, so there, there are like there are shuttles and things of that nature that are that are docked or landed here. And you do see that in the middle of the camp, um, there is a large. Um, well, you're not sure what it is, but it, whatever it is, it is covered by a very large camo net. Well, I bet it's a ship. How large is it? <laughs> uh, is it large enough to be like a scout or something? Uh, it doesn't look like it's one single thing. It looks like it's covering up multiples, but it, but yes, it's about the size. the The square footage is about the size of a scout, and it is okay. covered up with this, with a, uh, with a camo, with a camo net. Can we get a, a, a head count? Of the number of Aslan that are here? Yeah. Uh, make a recon plus intellect check. Okay. Are we are we all doing it or just you, me? You or? can. I got plus three on my recon and intellect totals and still only get a seven when I roll. So. I rolled really good. Um, good job, yeah. I got 13. So you you count that there are two shuttles... You count at least you from what you see, you see eighteen males. Ooh, damn! Okay. Um, and you know that if there are a couple of shuttles, that they probably have, um, you know, engineering technical support, which means a number of females. Probably, um, probably not enough for all of the males. But I mean, if it were enough for all the males, that would be twice as many females. Because usually with Aslan, you got to figure two per male. But <clears throat> you're not seeing that. Um, you're seeing that there are what appears to be about 18 males. and But it, in the tents, you're, you're figuring there are probably a number of others. Okay, that's a lot. Yeah. <clears throat> but... Yeah. Yeah, we're we're probably not going to do any damage to this group. We probably need to be. We need to go get. We need to go get our real guns. Yeah, <laughs> that would be nice. Um, and, yeah. yeah, come back just fully outfitted. But I understand we're not going to do that. I mean, mm. Maybe we can, you know, uh, if they've got enclosures and shit, you know, maybe we can sneak up and run in an enclosure and kill everybody in that enclosure, you know, and, and just do <laughs> small groups of them. So like I said, I mean, it, it's late afternoon. You could come back and do, um, you know, get closer and, and take a closer look at this camp at night if you wanted to. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, if, I, if I that's like something that if you want to get more information, but I mean. Yeah, I kind of want to know what's under the. Well, okay, it's a gotta be a ship, right? Probably. Hmm. Well, I mean, the only thing we can do then is just try to sneak up and be cool about it. I mean, that's the only way we'll find out. Yeah. Yeah, it's probably better to get more information rather than less. So, okay. Let's come back at night. And get a better get a better look see. Okay. So all of you go ahead and make a stealth plus dex check. Um six. Not very good. Eight. Nine. Okay. Here, Get myself a spacer here. If we could use the terrain or anything to improve our our cover as we go up, I mean, of course we'll do that. Right. 
Yeah, I had considered that, but you also have to consider that these are Aslan, so um, that kind of cancels out. Mm. Sorry, guys. I, my brain feels like it's made a mush. I'm really tired today, so I'm totally on the same page. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I'm just tired of catching every single cold or flu bug that comes around. Just, ugh. Yeah, Nuts. it's been a bad year. And I, you know, and I don't even know how it is I'm catching it. It's not like I go anywhere. If we were still playing at the shop, I might be able to understand, but... Everybody's everybody's been complaining about that, like mildly sick over and over and over. Right, exactly. Yeah, no matter what. That is... Spring. Wanted. So you three can go ahead and um, roll initiative, but, um, and, I, and I'll tell you why here in a minute, but um, the first thing that I will say is that Keith, because he got a nine, um, is going to get a surprise attack. Sure, great alien, that's not. Um. Hmm. So I'll I'll get a surprise attack or um. Yeah, and I'll tell you why here in just a moment. Okay. Okay, so as you guys are sneaking up on this camp, uh, Beth is kind of uh, not being as stealthy as one might have hoped. Mm -hmm. And uh, she is not necessarily thrashing about and making a lot of noise, just not being quite as quiet as you would hope. Um, and one of the sentries around the perimeter of this camp, um, one of their guards has kind of noticed and is stealthily coming up. And he sees Captain Beth, but Keith sees him sneaking up on Beth first. So, Keith, what would you... The, the Aslan, this sentry is not aware of you. Mm-hmm. Trip and Tr trying to think of the quietest thing I can do with. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't want to rouse suspicion from all the rest of the camp. You you, br point. you brought the knitting yarn grenade, right? I mean that that's the <laughs> obvious distraction for cats. Uh, let's see. Uh, 
Don't you have a laser rifle or some shit? Yeah, a laser, a laser pointer. Yeah. I, I have a laser rifle. <laughs> yes. Oh, well, there. That that'll shut him up. That's not really a loud weapon, is it? I mean, it's not very loud. I think. Bright, yeah, though. it's very bright though. Maybe. Oh shit. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's yeah. true. You can't really have a flash suppressor on a laser weapon. <laughs> that no. kind of defeats the purpose, doesn't it? <clears throat> yeah. Um. All right. I, I guess it's going. Guess down. it's going down. I'm. I'm gonna shoot him with my laser rifle. I, that's 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 the way it's gonna go. Okay. All right. That is ten. That is a hit with a plus two to damage. Uh, is 27. Jesus. <laughs> so he's going to take 21, and that drops him in a single shot. Shit. So that would be 16. Good job. 17. Whoops. There's now 17 males. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> All right, 17 more to go. Let's go, gang. Uh, are the women going to fight, too? Maybe. They're smarter, so they might not. I am I'm going to try to... If there's any cover to be found, I'm going to take cover. <laughs> yeah, good call. With my minor action, if I have some. Okay, so, so Beth, you you turn just as you see this uh, a, a flash and the snap of of the laser, and you see this Aslan <laughs> drop with a with a, a smoldering hole coming out of his chest, and uh, it burned right through his Awu leather armor. Mm. And uh, I will need to roll. No, it it evidently is not heard. Okay. Um. Well, we all might want to grab a limb and start dragging this corpse away because if they find a dead Aslan, I think they're gonna just kill. No, we definitely gotta stick him in some shrubberies. Yeah, sure. Find some shrubbery. <laughs> Neat. <laughs> yeah. So you guys uh, spend some time, you know, uh, moving this Aslan to the uh, to the bushes. And uh, does he kinda... have a radio or anything on him? He does. He has. He has a. He has a couple of things. So, um, where is it? We are going to shake him down, right? I mean, Might as well. Yeah. He doesn't need this stuff anymore. Oh, I guess he took more damage than that. I thought I thought a leather gave better uh, armor than that, but no, it does not. Only protection one, so yeah. He actually took twenty six of that. Here we go. So <clears throat> he has on him a clan com. Um now clan comms uh basically it's standard Aslan personal communication. <laughs> Um, it's got, it's basically got dedicated channels for the owner's family, pride, and clan, in addition to normal communications features. Um, people outside of the clan can be gifted clan comms, but if you are, <clears throat> if you are somebody who's in possession of a clan comm, 
and it was not gifted to you, then then that is considered a major insult to that clan. Yeah, well, we definitely still want to have that right now, at least, right? I mean, because we'd yeah. like to try to listen. Right? Yeah. Yeah. We want to hear what's going on and uh, uh, throw off any confusion about where he is right now. So, yeah. it, I mean, as far as communications go, um, and I, I don't know, I, I would assume that you guys went fairly late into the night. Um, it's fairly quiet. It's not like the, the sentries don't keep in contact with one another. And, I mean, you wouldn't expect them to unless there was something that needed to be called out. I would like to listen, and anybody that does speak on there, I want to copy their voice for my shriek box. Nope, nobody's talking. All okay. Of, all of the channels are active, but nobody's nobody's communicating because there just there isn't a reason to. No chatty Cathy's. Right. right. If man, if rumor. we can, yeah, if we can seal Team Six, these these centuries that are all awake then, I mean, anything else we want to do ought to be relatively easy going. If we could re rinse and repeat what we just did three or four times. Yeah. You, guys, you guys can go ahead and make a, uh, now that you have the clan com, you can make a recon plus intellect check, and you can make that with a boon. So roll three dice and take the two highest. Thirteen, doing good. Nice. 14. Yeah, I got a what nine plus three is twelve. So, so you you are able to determine um, with the active channels on this clan com um, presently <clears throat> that there are um, not including this guy. There are five other sentries. So there were six sentries in total walking the perimeter. Uh, or stationed in various locations around this camp. But, and that seems that seems low. Uh, on the one hand, it seems low, but on the other hand, it seems like he put out, you know, nearly half of his force as guards around this camp. Um, but this section, <clears throat> now that you took this one guy out, you can get to the center of the camp if you are to rem if you remain stealthy, you could get to the camo netting at the middle of this camp and check out what's under that camo netting. Ooh, that sounds fun. Well, my stealth is not great, so I think I will hang back. Um, I I can sneak up there. Okay. I would yeah, also okay. like to take this moment to point out that uh, I have augmented eyes. That's true. And, yeah, and so uh, I I should uh, should be I'm just gonna make look of infrared. Anybody that should be showing up really nice to me. Okay. If they're creeping around. So you when you switch over to IR, um, you you're looking around this camp. So and like I said, the the forest around the this um this Aslan camp uh, is really. Um, the trees are, like I said, dark obsidian, like an obsidian black ranging to a deep blue. But when you switch over to IR, you can see that the trees are just f filled with all manner of wildlife moving about in, the, in these forests. All stuff that Aslan would like to hunt. You can clearly see why they want to live here. All right. Well, I mean, it's also obvious to you of why the why the ranchers are carrying around rifles and pistols. But yeah. I mean, just just at night when you when you look through the IR, you can clearly see why the Aslan have picked this location. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna ride with Keith with my things, and I'm just gonna try to keep him appraised of anybody that might be out and about. Okay, so the two of you go ahead and make a stealth plus dex check. All right. So that is 10. Oh, I'm sorry. No worries. Was that a 7? Uh, sorry, Keith. 
So, <clears throat> so you, uh, you guys stealth your way up to the uh, to this camo netting. Eh, your seven is okay. So, That's what I'm talking about, Papa. <laughs> you get up to this this camo netting, and Keith, you kind of lift up one edge, and under this camo netting, there are four Aslan helicopters, like assault helicopters, and they are all equipped with what looks like um, there are there are tanks full of liquid under them and a and like a spray nozzle like they're getting ready to do some crop dusting like crop dusting like actual crop dusting like fertilizer or you don't know they're just they are they are these these heli these assault helicopters instead of being equipped with weaponry instead have these big uh you know the white plastic chemical drum tanks with with spray nozzles under the so, helicopter. All right. Do, do the do the tanks look like flammable? Do they have like markings on them, like to warn of flammability no. or anything? No. no. Nothing like that. Nope. They're we just a blow plain. All this shit up, they're just man. a plain white tank. Why don't you guys taste the contents of the tank <laughs> and then? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Try. Try licking your finger and just... Man, we should blow all this shit up. That's what we should do. That's I mean... exactly what I'm thinking. It, 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 I was hoping it's an explosive um, liquid, but I don't know for sure. I'm Is there fuel to... about anywhere uh, that looks like you know the fuel for the helicopters? Not, not here, no. I mean, the, the helicopters are assault helicopters, though, and they've got weapons on them, huh? No. They have. They are unarmed, except for these tanks. They might genuinely be trying to get rid of some weeds, or who knows? It's, Does it matter? They're the, they're 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 bad. That we've we've already assaulted one of their kin. Beth, make a um, make a recon plus intellect check. Uh, Twelve. So on the other side of the camp, you can see that a a light has turned on, and you can hear the sound of an electric engine being spinning up. Okay. Uh... This is on the other side of the camp, more towards where the shuttles are. I will alert my crewmates. To do something or leave. Oh, wait. You, you heard that, Keith. We've got to do something. That's right. <laughs> Captain says do something. You could right. Do <laughs> okay, whatever. Um, this is my fault at this point. Okay, so I, I'm trying to think of what explosives I have on me. I have, I, I have frag grenades, but I don't know if that's such a good idea. You need a well, wick and a lighter and running. Yeah. Do they, do they have a, a liquid fuel system to these helicopters? Yeah. Hey, man, yeah, that's a wick in the gas tank. That's right. Yeah, we do all four of them, we light them. It doesn't necessarily have to go off in unison, you know? It's not like we're putting on a, a theatrical show. And then we head, you know, towards another part of the camp and assault some more Aslan. <laughs> Uh, um, this sounds like uh, our our it's, kind of plan. So. Sounds like it's happening. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I would say, uh, if that is your, if that is your plan, this, this will well be thought out. this. <laughs> this will be a uh, it's going to be a makeshift explosives plus intellect or education check. Your choice. Okay. And uh, for what you guys are doing now, now, oh, I'll wait for Beth to to get back. I can, uh, I could maybe provide some 
stuff to to do a task chain on there. Let's see. I do have explosives, so I'll be I'll be joining this. I'm just like gonna provide cover fire if necessary. So That's... Beth, from the other side of the camp where the shuttles are are landed, you can see a four or, or a, a an additional chopper, an assault copter lifting off, and it flies over the camp and heads toward back towards the village. Okay, um, that's not good. It'll come back soon enough. Yeah, that may that may not be soon enough. <laughs> soon if enough may not be soon enough. <laughs> if it if it's heading to the the village, there might be something nefarious going on here. They might be dropping chemical weapons. Who knows what this is? Yeah, is we're that, 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 that's just, yeah. We're not aware of any good reason that could be happening, are we? Right, but, I mean, when we start blowing up these helicopters here, I bet that one turns around and comes back. Will that be fast enough, though? I don't know how. I I probably got, like, one. I could fire one shot and then hide from my rainbow gun. That would certainly get people's attention. We just got really hit by have, a unicorn. Yeah, what the fuck? I don't really have any skills that I can. I think I can task chain with you to make anything help on your roll, Keith. You okay. just got to blow this shit up, man. I can right. give you encouragement. Yeah, I'll, I feel pretty good about it. I'll shoot my rainbow gun when it's my turn. I think. So, so Beth, you're going to shoot at the at the helicopter. Yeah, I think it'll turn around probably. <laughs> Okay. So wait. Oh no, I've been so, laughed at. Now I must rethink my plan. Beth, no, it's fun. Just fuck them. Beth, go ahead and make your make your shot with the rainbow. And uh, Keith, you can go ahead and make an explosives plus intellect or education check. I don't even want to hit necessarily. Um, let's see. Mm. Okay, so it's a nine. Okay, so you you do hit the helicopter, um, but because it uh, it's a helicopter. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a helicopter. So you hit, but um, it doesn't really do you know much more than superficial damage. Um, and the what? Uh, I need to. I don't even know that they noticed. God damn it. Um, because, I mean, they only got, like, that's like a three on their full recon check. They just, you hit, but it they just keep going. They're like, mm, must oh. hit one of them big dragonflies. Is there a, uh, a big tent uh, or thing that looks like it's got the communications and all that there? Uh, mm -hmm. There's numerous big tents. There's also... Um, you know, semi-permanent structures, you know, like uh, uh, compartment structures that have been set up. Right, like the closest kind of tent that looks like it has radio equipment or something on it uh, nearest us, uh, I I think I'm going to throw a couple grenades in there. Okay. Is, is, do I see heat signatures coming out of it? You see the heat signatures, people sleeping in numerous tents. I, I mean, want with a lot of people sleeping. I want to go throw some grenades in that room. Okay. Uh, I got a nine on my explosive check. Okay. <laughs> so Ting, uh, are so are you waiting until Keith lights the the wicks? As I see, he's about to wind things up. I'm going to go ahead and make my way over there, and when he lights the wicks, you know. On, on his turn, my turn will be throwing grenades. If the grenades blow up a second first, you know, hey, I'm okay with that. Uh, I don't think it'll change the outcome of how things start to go. Okay, go ahead and make your, uh, it would be an athletics dex check. Nine. You drop those grenades right into that tent, and uh, I guess we will 
between yeah. Keith and Ting, um, make a in, Keith and Ting roll initiative. The the one who gets higher has theirs go off first. I got an eleven. I I got a three. <laughs> All right. Oh. Okay. So my 11 is plus 3 here. <laughs> so quite a bit longer th before the the helicopters uh, start to burn. So Keith or, or Ting throws your, his grenades in there, and uh, you can roll your damage for your grenade. Um, does anybody know how much a frag grenade does Should, on top? I believe it is 5D. Okay. And there we go. 21. Okay. So, <laughs> so <clears throat> there is a loud boom, and Ting, as soon as you throw that grenade, what are you doing? I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, are you booking it back, or... I guess it's a good time to go ahead and rendezvous with the captain. Okay. So <laughs> um, uh, I mean, that's... that's uh, uh, we didn't really plan out uh, what we all were going to do after we started blowing stuff up. Uh, <laughs> we didn't get that you know. far. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so Keith, you see this, you can see this explosion go off and part of this main tent just kind of collapse in on itself. And you can hear shouts coming from various portions of the camp and, uh, you know, the sounds of wounded uh, screaming in the night. And you see Tang come r running past you, and your the the rope that you have used for uh, and and rags that you have used for wicks are catching this the the fuel tank on this helicopter on fire. Now, unlike the movies, it's the helicopter is unlikely to just explode, but uh, it will be on fire and it will burn for a long time. So there's that. So you guys, uh, the, this fire and is this chopper is on fire, and part of this camo uh, netting is on fire. As you guys run back and meet up with the captain, the captain, uh, you, you know, you guys are aware she hit the helicopter. Nobody seemed to have noticed, and but you can see in the distance, you can see the light from this helicopter. It is circling over the village. We have, do we have, a, we don't have anything that'll hit that, do you we? You have a PGMP, don't you? Well, yeah, but I didn't lug it all the time. Yeah, you should have carry that. Here, hold on, I'll just keep this in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep this nuclear particle accelerator in my pocket. Hold on. Well, we've got this comm uh, with the clan comm. You know, maybe we ought to talk to them, you know, like... Uh, hey, it's on fire. Or hey, other helicopter out there, you know, uh, we're going to kill all your homeboys over here. Uh, we've got your other helicopters on fire. Um, we're we're going to eradicate you, the false lord of piece of shit that you are off this fucking planet. They're okay. kind of dumb. Maybe we should just yell that the thing's on fire and then they'll look at it and see that it is. I don't know. <laughs> So you, I mean, I, I, you, the grenade going off woke some people up. I'm sure. Yeah, I mean. you yell that into the into the clan com, and you can in the distance you can see this helicopter that's been then circling around the over this village, turn and and come back. It's it's coming back towards the uh, um towards the camp, and underneath it, as as it in the moonlight, you can see that it is spraying something under the underneath the chopper. Yeah. This have to wash chemicals. all that off, whatever it is. Yeah. yeah, I was hoping it was explosive even still, but yeah. Yeah, it's probably like some biohazard shit. So I'm probably trying to kill the Uwa. Are you guys going to? I mean, you're not far from the camp and activity at the camp is starting to they are getting ready to mount some kind of assault right now they're trying to put out the fire what well, do I mean, you guys just, want to do i want to throw grenades in the people that are trying to put out the fire 
Yeah, I <laughs> That's guess. That's a bit far, isn't it? I, well, well, I, well but... I would think that that would be a, a little bit of a ways, but I mean, there's a it lot did. of pissed off Aslan down there. I'd it's like to, yeah. to take some cover, okay? Like, find a, a spot where you're not, like, wide open to whatever the helicopter's doing. Um, whatever we are, have is probably okay for filtering, like, biological, whatever. Yeah, your respirator like, mask should should be enough for biologicals. Okay. Um, let, let's let them land that chopper and then try and blow it up. Okay, so we are going to hide is what we're doing then, right? We're in a park. We're in a park in a spot Let's where... Let's go in, yeah. Yeah. We're, there's, is there a building that looks empty with my little heat looky eyes? Uh, I mean, yeah, there are numerous tents that are currently empty. There's a couple of uh, these prefab buildings that are currently empty. Seems like the entire camp is trying to put out this fire around the, these choppers in the middle of the camp. Shit. Captain, everybody seems to be trying to put out the fires and the choppers in the middle of this camp. And and I'm thinking if I could sneak up there and throw a grenade in the middle of that, uh, that would severely thin their numbers. You're probably right, Ting. That's a great opportunity. Do you happen to have a plasma grenade out of your curiosity? No, I didn't do that. I returned it. But I've got frag grenades, and I, I've been pretty successful with not dying on them. All right. So yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab a grenade and and get ready and and kind of try to sneak up on them and throw throw a grenade uh, okay. in the in the first responders. Okay. Uh, go ahead and make your athletics dex check. Okay, this is not five. This is two. And I add. Athletics dex check right there. Rolling with it. I got a nine. Okay, go ahead and roll your 5D damage. Big money, no whammies. 18. Okay. Bitches. That would be two. Hopefully that really kind of made them so they don't feel like fighting fires as much. Oh, yeah. Two of them are going to break off and uh, try to deal with you. That's a perfect time for my friends to start shooting with their long-range devices. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to go murder Hobo once more. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. Oh, these guys are on fire tonight. <laughs> so everybody can roll initiative. <clears throat> Hell yeah, four. Okay, so Ting, you see the your grenade goes off, and and yeah, it it uh, the grenade going off has has two effects. The first is that the helicopter that was on fire it takes the brunt of the explosion, 
and is now more on fire. This helicopter is now completely foobar. It is no longer viable. The and of course, when the grenade, the second part of this is that the grenade goes off and cuts down uh, several Aslan. One of them being one of the female engineers. <laughs> Two of the Aslan warriors uh, turn and cut uh, cut towards you. Uh, I need Where's my Aslan weapon sheet. These guys are wearing a Wua armor, but they are carrying. Aslan assault rifles, the Yahil auto rifles, uh, and they are going to be heading towards you. But you have initiative, so Ting, what would you like to do? Throw a grenade at him. Okay, how many of these grenades did you bring? Six. Jesus Christ! <laughs> you bring a box? <laughs> well, that's all I had. <laughs> Go ahead and roll an eleven. So yeah, uh, roll five d damage. Excuse me. Oh, there we go. Uh, fourteen. Not that great, but it's enough to make people think twice and then I'm just going to use my move to go ahead and head back in the way of Beth and all them. Okay. Marking them down. I'm actually now down to, to four or uh, three. Sorry. Frag grenades. All right. But I'm getting my bang for the puck out of them, but I haven't killed myself with them. So that's <laughs> not yet. really great. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it takes balls to throw bunches of grenades. Honestly, my opinion is it takes balls to throw one grenade. <laughs> yeah. You're, you're essentially throwing a stick of dynamite on a timer. That doesn't sound yeah. like a great idea. But, uh, so, <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, these guys, the, the grenade goes off. They they uh, are wounded, but they keep coming. One of them uh, seems to have taken the bulk of the shrapnel to his arm and shoulder. Um, and so he's not going to be very good with his rifle. Uh, the other one uh, seems to have taken the bulk of it to his the left side of his torso. And he's bleeding profusely and tore up, but uh, he still has his rifle and he's still uh, trying to take aim. And he is going to... The first one, uh, they are not... Uh, well, if you threw the grenade, he can make it to... You, the injured one can make it to you in like two minor actions. The other one is going to take a shot. And he gets an 11. Or a plus Dodging three. won't help for that. So. Plus okay. three. So, yeah, I mean, you can attempt to dodge if you'd like. That'll knock down of his effect, at least. Right? Right. So, I'll do that. I'll dodge. Uh, I'll take the minus... What was it? Minus what? one next round. Sorry, I... Way too far here. So, penalty equal to your dex DM. So, what's your dex DM? One. Okay, so that's only a plus two to his damage. Uh,. Yeah, and then my back suit gives me a ten armor. Right. So. Right. So hold on here. Oops. Wrong. There we go. Okay, one more. Ah, he only got ten total for his damage. Oh no, he's got auto. So ten, eleven. He got twelve total. 
All right, so I'll take two. You take two. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was pretty shitty. But the other one is now up on you, but he can't do anything. Um, for for his last minor action, he you know pops his dew claws menacingly. Um, and even even though he his arms or his his one arm is sh shredded and bleeding. He still looks massively powerfully built and really pissed off. Captain yeah. Beth, what would you like to do? Shoot the guy coming after Ting. Okay. Injured. No, Kitty, it's my pop pie. At nine for that. That is a plus one to damage. Okay. Thirteen. Oof. Uh, so he's gonna take twelve. Nap. He. Yeah. No. That that drops him. He's injured. Yeah. Yeah. No. You. You. He's. He's not dead, but he is most certainly unconscious. Um. And you. You're. I. Sh you're shooting him with the with your unicorn rainbow gun. I can only fire that like every other round. I use the advanced combat rifle. Oh yeah, well that works too. Uh, so yeah, you you pop off with the advanced combat rifle and drop him. He he goes unconscious, continuing to bleed out. Um, Keith, what would you like to do? I'm gonna shoot at the other guy. All right. The rifle. And that's eight. I'm sorry, what'd you get? Eight. That hits. No bonus to damage, but it hits. All right. So that gives me... Eighteen. And he goes unconscious as well. Yeah, either way, it doesn't matter. He go unconscious. So, so yeah, you you hear the snap, and your laser hits him in the chest, and he goes down. Um, what are you guys doing? Um, the rest of the camp, it's not going to take very long. Now, as this helicopter comes in, <clears throat> it is continuing to spray, and you get some of this spray on you. And when you and the spray on the ground. There's like a green vapor coming up off of the spray that hits the ground. It's not affecting you because you have respirators on, but the, wherever this spray hits the ground, there's like a green vapor coming up. How, how hot is that helicopter off the ground? It's coming in for a landing. So maybe, you know, is the doors 10 open meters. On it? Are the doors open on it? Yeah, the sides are, I think, maybe I have a picture. Let me see. If the doors are open on it, I'm sure going to try to throw a grenade. Yes, I do have a do it, Wait, we might be able to fill the tanks with, like, water and, like, rinse some shit off of the town, This possibly. is what these helicopters look like. That's cool. And, in fact, these are the stats for them. Now, usually these have a light auto cannon on them, but these helicopters do not. That cannon has that light auto cannon's been removed in lieu of these uh, these liquid tanks. Actually, I don't know if any of us can fly it. I've yeah, got it, flyer grav. Yeah, uh, well, if if you if you have flyer grav, that would give you flyer at zero. Yeah, so I mean, I I in theory could could drive it, I guess. Okay. That, that might be our getaway vehicle if, if they land and get out, because we've got a race going on. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, I don't know. It's up to you. You could just run back the way that you came. I mean, that's an option as well. I could use some first aid. That's... Okay. Yeah. <laughs> he needs. Um... He needs a Hello Kitty band aid. Yeah. Oh. 
Well, you know, anything to give me two back would be would have me closer to living than I was before. Who's, wait, whose turn is it? Is it Keith's or mine? Or you guys, you guys have killed the threats for now. The rest of the camp oh. is kind of in chaos as they're trying oh, okay. to put out I these fires. Jeez. Okay, I, I was waiting for my turn, but all right. Yeah, I can definitely give some first aid. That'd be mean. Um, so that'd be I. I got twelve on. Uh, first aid check. That's plenty to give me back my two. Yeah, that'll get you back here too. Thank you very much. So she Captain. bandages you up. So, like I said, what would you, what do you guys want to do? I don't think. I mean, honestly, you're not going to you're not going to find a viable way of stealing that helicopter until we kill everybody. Right. Yeah, you would have to you would have to kill a lot of Aslan to get to that helicopter. Yeah. Okay, maybe we can just take some of the chemical. Well, you've got some on you. Oh, okay, yeah, that's true. All right. Um, and thought... Beth, uh, you can make a medic plus intellect or education check. Okay. I guess we're going to sneak away into the night. I got an 11. Okay. If, if that's what you're thinking. So... So as you are sneaking away into the night, Beth, and you, like I said, this this uh, this liquid that came out of the helicopter, you've got some on you, um, and anywhere that it is touched, like the this green vapor is coming up off of the ground. It's coming up off of you. Um, your estimate is uh, using your medical expertise. You believe that this is some kind of neurotoxin. Oh, great. God. So you you kind of you sneak off back into the night, heading back the way you came. And when you... Well, I mean, unless... unless Were you wanting to do... To complete an assault and try to kill the rest of them? Or were you wanting to go? Um... I, I don't know if we're going to be able to kill all of them tonight. We need okay, to okay. warn everybody about the neurotoxin. At least like, give them a chance to listen to us about not, like, uh, inhaling green vapor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> hey, guys, by the way. So uh, you guys get back to the village, and you walk into a scene of utter horror um, as you walk into the village and see the villagers um, dying, gasping for breath. God damn it. Uh, this neurotoxin causes the causes them to essentially um, suffocate where they're standing. And all of the any of the the people in this village that which is basically all of them that aren't wearing respirators are going to die now a few of them can can make it inside uh, but after fi about five minutes even in inside uh buildings the neurotoxin starts to make it inside of these um <clears throat> because these buildings are not airtight so it starts to make it inside and kill them inside um, the refugees that you brought with you of course they're okay because they're wearing respirators <clears throat> as are you guys, but uh, you probably don't want to take those off. The other thing that you know is that these neurotoxins are not affecting any of the Awua. And huh. you note that it didn't affect any of the Aslan uh, be that were putting out the fire. Oh, we've got to we've got to get in little little Betty and use that that fucking turret. Um. Amidst, amidst the carnage of all of these people uh, choking to death and dying, Yana Teak and her cameraman, Nendo, come out, um, and she finds you, and she she grabs you, and she says, I have to get back to the spaceport. I have to get to my ship. Everybody needs to know what's happening here. They need to know that the Aslan are trying to murder people. This is this is a renegade uh, Aslan Lord, and 
And I might add, uh, he's he's taken a severe uh, punishment uh, for what he has done already. She the, <clears throat> she is adamant that she needs to report this. <clears throat> this she wants to she wants to make sure that everybody knows what has happened on Trioki. Can she use the autopilot to take the climber back? Yeah, she could actually. All yeah. right, adios. See ya. So she she takes uh, as many of the um, refugees uh, that you brought with you as she can. Loads up into a crawler and goes and heads back towards the starport. What do you guys want to do? Will he leave me uh, one of his little camera drones? Sure. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, he thinks that if that will assist you in some way, um, that that's great. Um, but um, however you want to deal with this, um, but now keep in mind. Um, you guys have already thrown some grenades. Now, who threw those grenades? We don't know. It could have been anybody. I mean, a lot of people have grenades. Um, but you're all by throwing grenades and getting into a fight, you're already in violation of the law on this planet. So if it were to come out that you were the ones that threw the grenades, all of the Aslan that are in charge of this planet aren't going to be happy with you. I mean, I don't know what the exact penalty for that is, but the Aslan usually are pretty harsh with their penalties. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Then we need to kill them all. Uh, yeah, that, that's a lot of Aslan. <laughs> you don't have that many grenades. No, no, I mean, uh, if we got, like, in the little Betty, the, the shuttle that has the cannon on it, and we flew back over there and laid waste to that fucking little settlement. Right, but the clans the, the clans are going to, one, shoot down little Betty, and two, then execute anybody that survives. Oh, uh, okay. Right. Yeah. Because, like I said, the, the law is no weapons. <clears throat> so I guess we should go. Yeah, yeah, I think we should get out of here. And the refugees don't want to stay here anymore because of seeing a bunch of people get gassed, uh, right? Well, they do. They still believe oh. that Trioki is their promised land. But, um, I mean, they don't want to stay here right now because, you know, dying. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Dying's <laughs> bad. So you guys, uh, you guys head back to the starport. Now, um, who wants to make a, a communica- uh, electronics communications plus... Um, intellect or education check. I think Ting has the best comms. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we us a plus three to the roll. That sounds good. With an eight. Okay. So with an eight, you are able to pick up some of the broadcasts uh, around the starport. And the evidently um, the first thing that Yana did as soon as she got back to the starport is is report to the authorities what has taken place. The clans have uh, decided that um, uh, well, first of all, obviously this Aslan Lord was in violation, um, but um, because of the situation right now. It is best for all non-clan essential ships in close orbit around Trioki to vacate and to leave the area. So uh, basically, Bad Betty and your crew has been ordered to to leave. You are you are not welcome on Trioki for now because until they are able to get this situation locked down and to deal with this rogue Aslan Lord. So then the people that we have in the shuttle right now have a choice to either stay or go. It's up to them. They are not welcome. Shit. Okay. Yeah, we have to get out of here for a little Uh, while. Well, then we have to go. Where do we want to go? That is the good question. So, first of all, uh, so yeah, I mean, you guys return your your crawlers and board back up into um, the little Betty. um, And, of course, um, you know... Um, Lenka and uh, Ilum and the rest of the refugees are just beside themselves 
um, because they they wanted this to be their new home. This was their promised land. Um, so Beth, make a piloting plus dex check. Eight. Nice. So you take off with the little Betty, and uh, you get back up to uh, the Betty, the bad Betty, and uh, you know you you kind of uh, fill uh, well. Um, Captain um, Captain Treadwell's pretty much already aware of the situation. He's been told, you know, that you guys need to leave. This isn't actually the best. On here, I'm trying to find a better. Well, damn it, this isn't a good one either. Hold on. I thought I had already taken care of this map situation. Maybe. We're only supposed to be able to go six away from that. Yeah, six six parsecs from uh, Hitiakia. Uh, I will do... I guess. I'll probably have to do this again next week because I'll be like, hey, where'd that map go? And it'll be gone. <laughs> so we, we have a few options for places we can go. They're still within the six, six park sex. Yes. We have 1723 here, uh, th this one. We go here. Here, I'm going to give you a better map. Uh... That's nice. Um, okay. So there are some some pieces of information um, that you would have available to you. Um, the first, um, you've got a, a little bit. So um, Cameron, which is right here. Um, Captain Treadwell, Val Treadwell says that that's a no-go. He says that that's actually his home world. Um, the fu and it has a future status as the possible possible Imperial cli client state um, It's it, that is currently uncertain, and it has an arrangement with the Aslan Herate that, that prevents it from accepting immigrants. I don't know how Cameron could be an Imperial client state, considering that it is clearly inside the hair rate uh, demarcation line, but oh, whatever. Um, Asus is another possibility up here. Um, Asus might accept the refugees, but it currently ha is going through an Ihati crisis situation. They allowed some Ihati settlements um, in their rural outback, but it has begun to cause tension with their with their native population. Um, taking the refugees under these circumstances could be controversial. Um, Gortel, uh, <clears throat> Gortel, absolutely not. So Gortel is a weird planet. It is run by the Church of Nom. 
And the Church of Nom is these weirdos that thinks that um, they are going to... <laughs> they believe that they are going to en release the enlightenment of humanity by, um, by fostering psionics, which is great <clears throat> on the surface, except that they have taken it to that next ne next level. None of the people on the planet Gortel are allowed to ever leave the planet. And so, because, you know, only the clergy and um, the, the higher-ups, politicians, are allowed to actually fly in space and leave. Um, the one thing that Gortel is known for is that they actually have a fleet of old Sindalian uh, ships that they've kept in mothballs. And so, um, essentially, if you deposit the refugees on Gortel, um, their lives would be little better than when they were slaves in the Glorious Empire. Um, mm -hmm. Colony 6 and Delta Theta <clears throat> are human-controlled. They are possibilities. Um, major concern is that they are constantly under siege by the Glorious Empire and have their hands full just trying to remain independent. If the Glorious Empire were to take over those two worlds, the refugees would then just be slaves again. Um, Torrance and Lycidius... Um, Torrance and Lycidius are essentially considered out of the question. Both are blighted or, or plague post-apocalyptic nightmare worlds. So they've been basically bombed into uselessness. Um, Hecarda uh, here, um, they might provide sanctuary, but it's a highly inhospitable world, and the refugees' prospects there would be grim. Uh, Dostoevsky is up here um that world is quite a ways away and it is an imperial client state which makes it a safe haven the sole focus of dostevsky is its research station and the industries that support its efforts um the refugees could fit in there but nobody i mean as to what they would do nobody knows um and then there is sif um, Sif is an enigma. Um, nobody really knows what's going on on Sif. The biggest uh, hurdle to getting to Sif would be that you would have to cross Glorious Empire space in order to get there, which could be potentially dangerous in and of itself. Um, those are those are the main ones. Um, these other worlds here in the in this yellow section, because this is Herate space, um, moving moving refugees to these worlds because those are Aslan already Aslan worlds could be problematic. So um, I'm not sure where you guys would like to go. Um, those worlds where they have their hands full, just trying to stay independent. Maybe they would like a bunch of influx of humans to help fight colony six and de uh delta theta colony yeah. six is actually a fairly nice world well hey then it's something worth fighting for and um they have a chance they didn't have a chance like hardly anywhere else really um another thing i was thinking is maybe the Bad Betty stays like orbiting something, and we go see what's happening on Sif. Possibly, um, or the 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 world full of religious nuts might be easy to overthrow. Honestly, they usually <laughs> don't fit together. So. Nah, well, I don't know. It, it, yeah, Gortel is an amber zone world, meaning that even the Traveler's Aid Society says that most people should stay away. Okay. Colony 6 sounds. Let's check out Colony 6. It's not so far away that they could never get to their promised land world someday if they fight real well in the war. Okay, so what route are you going to to take to get to Colony 6? You're at Trioki now. Right. So previously we went through here. Right. We're going to go a different route. We're going to skip... Uh, this way here. Um, actually, maybe hmm, we can go three. Right. Okay, we'll go here, here, 
here. Okay. Refuel. And Why then go to Colony 6. So keep Why in mind... Go so go back here, and then... Because that's a, we know that's a friendly port. We can refuel for them. We can even report in. I was just going to say, uh, Hrahrau is not a friendly port. It's not. Okay, let's not go there then. Okay, we'll go this way, this way, this way, just to get to uh, oh, where we started from. Yeah, then okay, we can so go. Yeah, that'll put you a Hitiakia. And then it's one, two, three. So the so the uh, populated systems, except for this blank uh, hex that you'll be jumping through, will be Halai and Hitiakia, where you'll refuel at Hitiakia, and then uh, you'll jump into Gortel and then on to Colony Six. So, um, okay, who wants to make the uh, astrogation check? I will take care of the astrogation. Okay. I think you're J Drive too, aren't you? Yep, and J Drive. Yeah. Is it you that has a, I have Astrogation one. I have Astrogation three because of my chip. Right. Oh. All right. Do you add something to that or no? So I I get. Uh, you um, rolled Snake Eyes, so we're trying to make sure you yeah. don't like die. Yeah. <laughs> So that's five, and then do you add intellect, or...? Yeah, do I add intellect? Yes, it would be either intellect or education. Okay. So, <laughs> I get six. That So six is exactly what you need. It is a routine shock. Um, so, yeah, so you, no bonus to your J-Drive, but you get to make a J-Drive check. Get to not die. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no die today. So that's a nine. Okay. One of my worst. Yeah, that I mean, talk about uh, <laughs> so your your engineer's just phoning it in today, he's just doing the bare <laughs> minimum. He's quiet yeah. quitting on the ship. Jeez, all oh, you did was see a bunch of people get gassed to death. Yeah, right. Right. <laughs> His morale's down because he just watched a bunch <laughs> of people die. I mean, yeah, they were dumb, but still. Um, so yeah, you guys are able to, you know, after, um, you know, probably about three days worth of travel time to the, uh, jump diameter, you, you jump and head for blank space. Your next stop after this blank hex, uh, you know, will be Halai. So in two weeks, you'll be at Halai. And uh, we will pick up next week with uh, some interesting things that will happen when you come out of Jump Space in Hawaii. Right. Awesome. We will pick that up next week at 7 o'clock. Right, you think there's still grenades in Hawaii? Um, you can have some of mine, dude. It's okay. Yeah, yeah I don't... Yeah, I don't... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know that you're going to want to stop in Hawaii, but it is a very interesting place. Right. Cool. <laughs> that was really fun. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Have a good night, guys. I will see you next week. Hopefully, I'll be more over this cold. All right. Good night. Have a good night. <laughs> <laughs>